Thanks everyone for joining us today on a Saturday afternoon. I know it's two, it's twelve o'clock in India. It's two thirty here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And what I'd like to do is I want to I want to thank all of you for taking your time to be with us in Owner Circle for Malaysia and also Franchise India. What I'm going to do for you guys today is this. I know that at this point of time, as a business owner, it is a very stressful period to be alive. At the same time. They are business owners who are looking at amazing opportunities as well, right? So what I'm gonna do it today is I will talk about what most people are going through, right? Which is the coronavirus crisis, and for most entrepreneurs out there, for most business owners, this is a business crisis. At this point of time, if you're a business owner, what's happening is change is happening on a monthly basis. It is happening on a weekly basis. And sometimes it's happening on a daily basis. So at this point of time, as an entrepreneur, your vision, your plans, your customer needs, and even the government rules are all moving targets. I know right now in India it's a complete lockdown, but soon they are gonna open up again. But the question right now is this: how long can the open up be sustainable? Because it's just a matter of time. An outbreak will take place again, and then we will move into a second wave. And you got to realize that at this point of time, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, your business plan no longer work. And what you need is what I call dynamic strategy. Now, what it means by dynamic strategy is this: it means that your role as a leader is to be able to constantly innovate and execute at the same time. You want to look into how can you. Come up with creative ideas to solve the problem for yourself and your business and your customers, while taking massive actions, which is execution. Realizing that maybe the government rules might change, and then you gotta re-innovate again. So leaders' role today has became the role of recalibrator, where you are constantly recalibrating between innovation and execution. In other words, you are constantly fine tuning between creative ideas to solve problems at the same time taking massive action. Because at this point of time, the slower you move, the faster you die. So you got to take action like crazy. You got to move very fast. At the same time, you want to make sure that you are moving in the right direction. So the the biggest problem for most entrepreneurs right now is this. I believe we are going through the same thing, just like every entrepreneurs in the world. The fact is, most business leaders are well equipped to deal with business during good times, but they have very little or no experience to handle serious business crises. And this is not only in India, not only in Malaysia. This is happening all around the world. And this is why, at this point of time, there's so much information online. Um, there's so many Facebook Live taking place globally. Everyone is interviewing each other. But how many agree that at this point of time? The social media is drowned with information, but what you are truly starving for is wisdom. I believe, as an entrepreneur, at this point of time, information alone doesn't help. What you want to know is what are the ideas that you can take to make sure you can achieve implementation. So at this point of time, you need tactics and you need strategies, right? Motivation is a must. Okay. So what I'm going to let you guys know is this. In my session today, this is not a motivational program. My training is going to be focused on both tactics and strategies. And my goal is this: my goal for every one of you here in India is to realize that every crisis it means two things: it means danger and it also means opportunity. Now, this word, these two Chinese words here, means crisis in Chinese. It means weiji. So, if you notice this Chinese word. Is made up of the word danger, and it also made up of the word opportunity. In Chinese, it means that in times of crisis, you got to choose one side that you are on. If you are on danger, you will be dead. If you are on opportunity, you will fly. So my goal today is this: my goal is for me to make sure that all of you can get out of danger and to survive, and then we will talk about opportunities. All right. So what I'm gonna do is this. First of all, I want to share with you how I came about doing this.、Uh, my humble truth is I was never meant to do this. 
I've been running a business training academy for the past three years plus, and these are my members in Malaysia. And what happened was when the crisis took place, my members came to me and they asked me what to do. What am I going to do to bring them forward? And I shared with them this. I shared with them that in every crisis, what happened is you do not know how long this will last. And you do not want to predict as well. You want to prepare. At a point of time of crisis like this, there will be three types of leaders. The first type of leaders are what I call the fear-focused leaders. A fear-focused leader will focus on fear, panic, anxiety, all the negative emotions. And if you are one of those fear-focused leaders, trust me, it's just a matter of time, you will be fright. Now, the second one is this. The second type of leaders are what I call the unfocused leaders. Unfocused leaders are those where they, they are constantly out there looking for solutions, but they are not very focused on what kind of solutions they need. They are constantly flirting on different ideas. And if you're just trying out every single thing, what is going to happen is you'll be very tired. You'll realize that you're working harder than ever. At the same time, you do not understand why you do not have enough results, but you're constantly motivating yourself that uh, you're saying that, don't worry, this will one day come to an end. Now, if you are what I call an unfocused leader, what's going to happen is this. It's just a matter of time. Your motivation will wear off and then you will fall. Now, my goal for you guys, 60 plus of you here is this. My goal for you guys in India is to make sure that you're not a fear-focused leader. You're not an unfocused leader. You're what I call a strategy-focused leader. And as a strategy-focused leader, what you want to recognize is this. In every crisis, is what I call a reset button. And in this reset button, what's going to happen is you want to use this period of time to build your foundation. Because in times of reset button, like recession, the big boys will fall. And this is the window of opportunity for you to become big. So what you want to do is you want to look into how can you do whatever it takes to make sure that your business is still alive. You want to preserve your business. The only way you can preserve it is by pivoting, okay, by innovating. And then you want to make sure your innovation can make money for you, can generate profits. So that after this recession, you will position yourself to propel and to prosper. So while others are fright, while others fall, you will be able to fly. So my goal today for you guys is to be able to be what I call a strategy focused leader. And I created a training for my members uh, on the first week of the lockdown in Malaysia on 17th of March. And today what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring this training to you guys in India as well. So thanks to Franchise India, I'm able to do this, not being there physically, but we are able to do this virtually, right? So thank you so much Franchise India and thanks all of you for being here today. Now, at this point of time, one question most people have is this, how do you innovate in times of crisis? So what I'd like to do is I would like to give you a framework which I've shared with my members in Malaysia when this crisis started. Now, as a business owner, you have three focus. Your first focus at this point of time is what is your marketing message? How do you attract customers? And once you're able to attract them, you want to give them a promise, which is your products or your service, right? What are you selling? And the third one, is how are you delivering this experience to your customer? So if you truly understand that this is the three main things that you need to do to realistically make money during this crisis, you also want to recognize that at this point of time, the emotions that your customers are feeling is this. Number one, they're feeling fearful. Number two, they're feeling nervous. They don't know how long this will last. Right? Is my location going to be a red zone or gonna, is it going to be a green zone? At the same time, everyone is so skeptical. They don't know who's right, who's wrong. They don't know who's doing the right thing, who's really cleaning the places. So everyone is very skeptical. So what you want to do is you want to recognize that at this point of time, if you are still using the business as usual message, 
your message today is totally irrelevant. Whatever promise that you're selling, if today nobody is buying your products or your service, the reason is because your product and your service today has become a nice to have product. If your experience has been physical, today you are in danger. So once you recognize this, you want to understand that in times of crisis like this, when emotions are high, when logic is low, what the, your market is truly looking for is someone who can stand up and say, hey, I need you. And you want to be the one. You want to become what I call the thought leader to your market to let them know that you got it covered. You want to be the one who's instilled safety. You want to be the one who's instilled confidence. You want to be the one who show them that you truly care. And what you want to do is you want to stop whatever messaging that you are doing and let them understand that business unusual is the new usual. Moving ahead, this is not going to be a two weeks thing. It's not going to be a four months thing. It's not going to be a six months thing. It might last for the next two years or even longer. So you want to show them that business unusual is the new usual. Whatever products that you're selling, you want to ask yourself, how can you make it into what I call a need to have product? If you can give your market what they want, very often they will give you what you need. So you will ask yourself, what is it that your market need right now? And lastly, you want to look into how can you turn the experience that was formerly physical and today you want to move it virtually. Okay. Now, if you understand that, then the next thing you need to do is this. As a thought leader, you want to stop being a consumer of content and you will start becoming a creator of content and context. You want to, be, you want to stop continuing whatever message that you have. You want to con start to contextualize that business unusual is the new usual. And then you want to come out as the thought leader to provide solutions. You want to stop focusing on your products and you will start focusing on your market. What is it that your market want right now? What is it that they need right now? Give them what they need, give them what they want, and they will give you what you need as well. And lastly, very importantly, you want to not only provide content, you not only want to provide context, you want to look for partners that can work together to create profitable partnerships to serve your market. Because at this point of time, some of these services or products, you might not have it, but by working with someone else, you are able to do it. Now, if you understand this entire framework, then you will know how to use what I call the crisis innovation canvas. I created this canvas on day three of the lockdown in Malaysia for my members in Owner Circle in Malaysia. And many of them have successfully pivoted, successfully made money. And this is my goal for you guys as well. Right? So I'm going to share with you how to use this. I'm going to give you a case study. Later on, what I'd like you guys to do is I want you to take this canvas and work it on your business as well. Now, I'd like to start with a first case study. And the case study is this company called Mythology in Malaysia. You may not know them, but let me share with you what they do. This is a stick house. What they're famous for, famous for is they have this uh, stick on fire where they will flame the meat and then they will serve it to the customers in the restaurant. However, at this point of time, when people can no longer go to restaurant, what can they do? Now, not only they were facing challenge of customers not going to restaurants, at the start of the lockdown, they were not on any food delivery platform at all. So how? So the founder of this stick house came for my training and what she did was she used this tool and she had a goal. Her goal was to recognize that people are bored at home, people are skeptical, and what she wanted to do was she wanted to show people that she cares. She has a lot of passion for food and she wants people to enjoy food. So her irrelevant message was her flaming meat. Her nice to have was her stick. This was what she used to do. And this was how people can eat it, right? People watch her flame the stick in the restaurant and then people eat it in the restaurant. So she recognized that all these are now irrelevant. So what can she do now? She changed her product offering to what I call a crispy skin roast pork belly. And then this is how she will do it. She will do Facebook live videos. She will poke needles into the meat and then she will show how people she's cooking the meat. She will, uh, there's an entire show about 
how she's cooking the meat, cutting the meat and enjoying the meat. And what happened was people love it. So what she would do then is on social media, she will uh, have her Facebook live where she will show people and she asked people to turn on your sound to listen to how crispy the skin of this meat is. So people start, she will start cutting the meat on Facebook and people hear the sound of crackling sound. People love the fact that this skin of this meat is very crispy and people wanted a bit, piece of that meat. So what she would then do is she would then sell the meat, right? She started a website. In, in just two days time, she created a website where people can buy online and then she will deliver it to their home. So this is a case study of my student mythology. Um, for you guys in India, you may not know them, but what I encourage you guys to do is go and check out their Facebook, follow them, see how they are doing it, how they are able to turn a restaurant, one outlet restaurant into now a profitable business during this crisis when people are no longer going to the restaurant. Okay, so what she has done was not only she's managed to pivot, she even had the media interviewing her. The media actually came and asked her how she did it. And she shared her case study in the media where she's creating recipe for comfort. And as you can see over here, when she was interviewed in the media, she said uh, she's grateful for her group of business coaches from Owner Circle who has been encouraging and supporting the team through Zoom meetings and calls. They help each other in terms of context, support and collaboration. So this is one classic case study of a restaurant that is able to pivot during this crisis. Now I'd like to show you more case studies. Um, another case study will be this. This is an organic food business. During the start of this crisis, what happened? They were panicking as well. So they took our training, they took this canvas, they took this tool, and then they got their team members to work on it. So their different team members started having new goals. Let's look at how do you move customers from fear to needs. And then they came out with the idea of boosting immune system, right? How to stay at home and be healthy. Some of them came out with the idea of fear to safety, right? Then they came out with the idea of, hey, how about focusing on you are smart to make a healthy choice. And then someone came out with this idea where um, this is how well is your immune system? So what happened was her team members all started taking this canvas and working on new ideas. So what happened was they later on pivoted the message of the business from organic natural products, affordability and reliability, they moved towards boosting immune system together. Okay, and um, not only that, they started posting on social media, how do you have a fun and healthy lifestyle? So this is a pl classic case study of a company that has a lot of staff, use this tool, work with their staff to make sure that they are able to come up with ideas. So guys, if you are a business where you have staff, you have directors, get your directors to use this tool to make sure everyone is aligned to move together, right? I will give you another case study. This is another student of mine. They are a fitness center. Um, some people call it a gym. And at this point of time, what did they do? Rather than focusing on one-on-one -on -one workouts, they started what we call the Fight COVID-19 Fitness Challenge. And in this challenge, how they run it is this. They are now getting everyone on the Facebook group. They get everyone to go on a Zoom call to exercise together. They will then post their workouts. They will post their results on the Facebook group. And then they will motivate each other and then they will create challenge. So they gamify the entire experience. Everyone is having fun, exercising, working out and keeping fit. And not only that, because they have numbers now, what are they doing next is this. Right now, they are also providing food. They work with restaurants around that location to provide food to all their customers. So this has been very successful in Malaysia. I hope you can gain some ideas to use it for India as well, all right? So guys, make sure you do this. Make sure you take advantage of opportunities because there's truly tremendous abundance of opportunity in the market right now. Because while most business, others, most business owners are fearful, nervous and scared, you are different. You are here 
you're well equipped with this tool, you know you need to pivot, you know you need to innovate your offering, you know you need to innovate your marketing message. Okay, you know you need to innovate your experience as well. So look at these three things. How can you do this further? But remember one thing, guys. Make sure you take advantage of opportunities, but please do not take advantage of people. I know there's a lot of fear in the market, um, and when there's fear and greed happening in the market, this is the easiest time for some business owners to take advantage of people, but please don't do that, right? So I hope you have gained something from this very short session. I'd like to share with you more case studies before I move on. Um, give you some case studies of companies who have attended my coaching program. I run a three days coaching program where I coach entrepreneurs and their team to innovate during this crisis. So I'd like to show you some case studies. This is a restaurant business in Malaysia. What they do is they sell desserts. So at this point of time, they can no longer have people going to their restaurants to eat desserts. Yes, they are on food delivery platforms, but that's not enough. So what did they do? They innovated and they created their own home kit where you can buy this kit and you can do it at home. So what they will do is they will do Facebook Live to teach people how to do it. And then people will buy the kit and do it at home. So as you can see over here, this is the founder of the business who shared that uh, he has made around 10,000 ringgit in four days. That's around, that's around 250 US dollar in four days, right? Just based on this new idea. Okay, I'll show you another case study. Event management. Is it possible for event management to make money right now? Many people say impossible. Why? Because at this point of time, there's no events going on. There's no way you can make money. Am I right? However, this event management company found a new niche. What did they do? They created the world, the Malaysia first virtual AGM, annual general meeting, because all listed companies need to have a general meeting every single year. So what did they do? They pioneered the first virtual AGM in Malaysia, and then they started acquiring deals. Right now, they have closed their first deal, which is around 3,000 US dollar uh, in the first deal. And right now they are on cost to close around 50 deals based on this new idea. So what I wanna show you is this. I'll show you that through pivoting, through innovation, you can realistically make money bring your business back to life and bring your business to a next level. I wanna give you another case study of another student of mine. This entrepreneur runs a business that does Airbnb. So they are like the Oyo of Malaysia, right? In case you don't know this gentleman over here, his name is Tony Fernandez. He's the owner of AirAsia. AirAsia is his partner, right? So when this crisis took place, there's no way Airbnb business can run. But this man managed to make 69,000 ringgit in two days. That's equivalent to 17,000 US dollar in two days, right? With this new idea. So what did he do? He used all the cleaners that he have and he put it into another business which he created during this crisis called Protect Plus. So they went into the sanitization business. So this is also an innovation of an entrepreneur who has successfully pivoted and right now, they are making money. Now, even for myself, I want you to know that I'm not just a trainer. I am a practitioner. I used to run businesses like this. I used to run events like this. It's all physical trainings. But because of this crisis, I have to get into virtual training. I'm conducting it on a weekly basis in Malaysia. This is my first time doing it in India. And if you really think about it, if not because of this crisis, there's no way I could have met you guys in India. So, through our training like this, we have been able to expand to different countries during this crisis. Why? Because we innovated and then we executed like crazy. So the essence of the crisis innovation strategy is this. In this crisis, you want to stop being a victim and you want to start being a victor. You want to stop generalizing your message and you want to start contextualizing fears and you want to start creating confidence. You want to stop consuming contents and you want to start creating contents and contacts. You want to start creating profitable partnerships. You want to stop focusing on your product 
and you want to start focusing on your market. Give your market what they want and they will give you what you need. So I hope that you have find this tool useful. This tool is very important to many entrepreneurs because if you use the right effort with the wrong tools, you will have no results. So this tool is to make sure you adopt the mindset of pivoting. If you download this tool, go to this QR code, scan this canvas, and you can download this tool. All right. So I've spent around half an hour speaking. Uh, what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to go into a question and answer before I continue with my last session for the day. All right. So um, if you guys got any questions, please post on the chat and I will do my best to share with you my thoughts. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Jonathan, for sharing such wonderful insights. Uh, we have some questions already in the Q&A section. And to all the attendees, please type in your questions in the uh, section, the question and answer section. And we'll try to reach out and read all your uh, queries. So I guess I'll just start with the first question. Yeah. Okay, so, so I think the, the first, first question... question yeah come on you can carry on come yeah yep uh what do you say so let's start with our first question so the first question is uh someone says i have met huge loss during the pandemic and have some savings left what kind of a business will be good for investment during this time well at this point of time if you have made a huge loss and this cash is whatever amount of savings you have left my suggestion is this you want to look into your circle of competence which means you want to look at what you're good at and then you want to look into the market that you want to serve is there a market that needs your help right now what you want to do is you want to look into how can you go into this market and build a business around that market you don't want to go in big, you don't want to invest whatever you have yet. You want to create what I call a minimum viable product. And a minimum viable product simply means you want to start small first. Okay, start small, try to solve one or two people's problem and make sure they can pay you. And once these one or two people can pay you and then you manage to solve their problem, then you want to look into how can you scale it up. Now, at this point of time, I know there's a lot of investment opportunities because the stock market is down. Uh, most properties are down as well. Basically, everything is down. The only two things that is up is gold and Bitcoin. So you know, ask yourself, are you going to be an, a full-time investor or are you going to be a business owner? Or do you want to go and look for a job? Because if you have no business ideas, you might want to look for a job. The only problem right now is there's no jobs globally, not only in India. The worst will be US. I think India is still fine compared to US. So this, if you ask me, is an opportunity for you to look into your business. Ask yourself, what market do you want to serve? Because very often what happens is for most people, they look into what business do they want to do? Okay, no, you want to look at what market you want to serve first. And then only you look at what business do you want to do? When you look at a certain market that you want to serve, you understand their problem. You'll be so obsessed with what this market really needs and then you create a solution for them, right? So my advice for you, uh, just pre-call, is you want to ask yourself, which market do you want to serve and how can you serve it better than anyone else? All right, so I hope I've answered your question, just pre. Uh, great, uh, so okay. the next question is, how do we create content for food as a chef and sell it? Oh, very good. If you have food, I've given you the case study just now, mythology, Chef Yeni. Now, as a chef, there's few things you want to do. Now, you want to recognize like in every movie, every time you watch a movie, you also want to see the making of the movie because you want to know how they created the movie, right? So just like food, I, I like to say that at this point of time, on Facebook is where you create, you show your finished product. But you want to use places like Instagram to show how you create the product. 
Okay, you want to use Instagram story to show how you create a product. You want to use Facebook Live to show how you choose ingredients. You want to show the whole experience, how, how you cook this product. Why do you cook it this way? And when, very often when you're able to engage with your customer online, when there's a familiarity, now they're familiar with you, there's a higher engagement, there will be more trust in you. And this is where they will want to do business with you once you give them an offer. So what you want to do right now is this. For the person who asked about this, um, for food, right? What you want to do is you want to create a hook. A hook is on social media. You want to create certain visuals or certain videos that attract people to watch first, right? I call it a hook. And then you want to create a story. Number two is a story. Two is a story of your product, the story of this food. Why do you serve it this way? Is it because your mom taught you so? Or is it because a customer taught you so? Or is it because you found out how to do it? And then lastly, you want to make sure you have the third content, which is action. You want to make sure people take action. So if you look at the canvas on my screen, on my bottom left is what I call a hook. Okay. That is how you create content. You hook people first. And then you create a story, number two. Okay. And then that one is you create an action so that people will take action and then they will do business with you. Right. So I hope I've answered your question. Abhi Lasha. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so the next question is I'm a teacher of strategic management. There is a decline in demand of article other than essential goods. We cannot enhance the demand. So what would be the strategy in such cases? Well, in my opinion, if let's say the market that you're serving right now is not paying you, you want to ask yourself, is there another market that can pay? Okay. I repeat, if this current market can't pay you anymore, you want to ask yourself, is there another market that you can go to that be able to pay you for your services? So very often, the reason why most entrepreneurs fail is because they are so focused on what kind of goods, products, and services they're selling. As an entrepreneur, you want to focus not on your goods and services. You want to focus on the market. So ask yourself, which market right now is able to pay? Okay. That's my first question for you. Now, my second strategy for you is this. My second strategy is for your current market. If your goods and services are not what they want, then is there something else that they need right now that you can provide them? So I will give you a classic case study where one of my students in Malaysia, he supply furniture to restaurants. And at this point of time, when restaurants are no longer opening, nobody needs furniture. What did he do? He supplied them sanitization and disinfectant services. Okay, remember this. Give your market what they need and they will give you what you want. So my advice right now is this. Number one is, are you, can you look into a different market for whatever goods and services that you have? And number two, if you want to continue serving this current market, can you provide them other goods or other service? Right, I hope I've answered your question. Thank you, Jonathan. So uh, the next question says, I deal in luxury garment products and this will be the last priority list of customers now for some time. What do you advise in this case? So if you are in luxury goods, at this point of time, you'll wonder like, why are customers not buying? And, and the reason why customers are not buying is very simple. is because you are luxury goods. This is their last priority. And what you need to do right now is this. You need to recognize that there's this movie called Titanic. I'm sure you heard of this movie before. I'd like to share with you a case study from this movie and then you'll understand what you need to do. You need to understand that when people were on Titanic, right? Everyone knows this movie. Most people will know this movie because it was like the best movie of its time. In Titanic, you are the rich, you are the poor. And when times are good, everyone wants to show that they're on Titanic. But when the Titanic hit the iceberg, what happened? 
people wanted to get out as soon as possible and they wanted to get on the lifeboat. So what does that teach you? It teaches you that when times are good, people want a luxury product. People want an aspirational product. When times are bad, what do people want? They want a call a practical product. So at this point of time in your business, if you are in luxury garments, my question is what can you do to provide a practical product? Okay, related to garments, what can you do to provide a practical product? However, assuming if you want to stick to luxury, what you want to do is if, if this market still can able to pay you, right? if there's still a market for that, you want to instill the practicality of it you want to show customers that how safe it is to buy from you. You want to show them that you really care. You want to show them that um, you're not just there to get them to buy, but you know that they have a new need right now. And how are you going to serve that? Right? So I hope I've answered your question on the luxury garment. Okay. Remember this for you, you are selling an aspirational product. You are selling a Titanic. Ask yourself, what do your customers want right now which is the lifeboat and what is the lifeboat you want to provide the lifeboat wonderful um so the next question says what should be my innovation strategy as a freelancer or a consultant i need to know what do you consult <laughs> what what do you consult on and then i can advise you now, in, in my opinion, as a freelancer and a consultant, you are very lucky because your business is very light. By what I mean by very light is your fixed expenses are low. So it means that you are able to move very fast. You're able to pivot faster than others. So my next question will be this. Um, where are you moving to? So you want to ask yourself at this point of time, which industries are doing well and how can you serve that industry? I'll give you a case study. One of my students who attended my training, he's doing corporate training. So he served the corporate, he trains corporates. Unlike me, I, I train SME owners, I train business owners. So during this crisis, business owners still can pay me. So I'm, I'm able to pivot quite fast, uh, serving my existing customers. So this corporate trainer, what he did was, he tried to go into SME market, he tried to come into my market, and he suffered badly because this market could not accept what he was doing and he was failing very badly and i give him just one advice i asked him this i said why are you from corporate and you're coming to public why don't you continue serving corporate and he told me this because corporate can't pay and i said that is because you are serving the wrong corporates at this point of time the banks the oil and gas companies the shopping malls can't pay you to trade but the hospitals, the medical businesses, the e-commerce business, they are booming. They are do making a lot of money. My question is, why aren't you looking for these industries to serve? So for you, who is a freelancer and consultant, my advice is go and find which market is able to pay you right now and serve that market obsessively. All right? Uh, great. So the next question is, how businesses in exhibition and event management industry survive in the recent times? Because that's one of uh, the industries that has been majorly hit because of this crisis. Crazy, right. I, I totally agree. Right now, the guys in events, they are badly hit. And what happened was, um, Few of my students, one of them are in wedding. <laughs> How do wedding make money, right? So what he did was he innovated his offering. He found out that at this point of time, there is one service which people can't wait, which is solemnization. So what he did was he started providing that service, uh, virtual solemnization. Another case study I showed you just now was events. They do conferences. Right now, what they do was they pivoted to virtual AGM. They serve public listed companies. And then they serve them, they serve the team, um, they get them to do virtual AGM. So you wanna ask yourself, what kind of events cannot be canceled and how can you create a new product to serve that market? Okay, um, I, I firmly believe that the whole conference and event business will be dead for the next six months. And if you, you happen to be in this business, you truly need to innovate 
you need to change your entire business model. If you want to continue serving the same guys, uh, you got to reinvent yourself. That's for sure. All right. And if not, uh, what you want to do is you want to look into what kind of car the, all the markets that you have. Uh, what do they need right now? And you want to look for partners to be able to serve this market. Okay, so that's my advice for you. Great. So the next question is, uh, I run a few Subway franchise and both were closed for two weeks before we started delivering through Swiggy and Zomato, which are third party delivery partners. Uh, but the sales never bounced back and are just 15% of what they used to be. Since I'm a franchise, uh, uh, there's not much that I can do on my own. So do you have any advice for me? Interestingly, uh, for you who is asking about this, uh, let me share with you, I actually trained the franchisor of Malaysia, the master franchisor of Malaysia. The owner of Subway Malaysia attended my training and uh, I gave him few advice. Number one is you need to ask yourself, how can you create a message that people need to boost their immune system and how can they eat Subway? You know, and Subway is the one who's able to provide that. You know, why eating fresh veggies and all from Subway helps. Now, the biggest problem right now is this. Because it's sandwich and Subway sell convenience of doing sandwich, making sandwiches. The biggest problem right now you have is why can't they buy the, this veggie themselves and then do it themselves? Why do they need to order from Subway? So the next thing you want to do is you want to look into how can you create a new promotion for your products. Okay, It can't be the normal sandwich anymore. You want to look into how can you create one new product that you can do during this crisis. However, if you're a franchisee, you might be in trouble because I don't think a franchisee is allowed to do that. You want to talk to your franchise saw who owns the Subway franchise in India and give them suggestion to do it. Because at this point of time, the more you can help him, the more he can help you. <laughs> in fact, I highly suggest you get, get your major franchise saw to come and attend my training, right? To structure something for you guys. Um, if you are your franchise so refuse to do anything, right? My, my advice is this: if you cannot sustain the business anymore, chances are you just got to close. I want to be very honest with you right now. If your franchise do not have an innovation strategy, and if you are continue burning money together with him, and he's not changing, he's not pivoting, he's not innovating, chances are he will die and you will die together. So you got to make a very difficult decision if your franchise saw is not innovating. Right? So I hope I've given you a good advice here. Okay, I, I know this advice is very brutal. Very, very ruthless, but this is really the honest truth. Um, thank you so much, Jonathan. Uh, do we have time for one last question? Sure, sure. We have time for one more question. Sure. So uh, I guess we'll just take up the last question. It says, what is your idea for future real estate with land use shifting due to work from home and online events and online education? And also, do you think work from home is the new normal or will it just fade eventually? My view is working from home will be the new norm because the fact is um, chances are people will be get be so used to it. They no longer really need to go to offices. I, I believe offices will change. The future of real estate will change because in time to come, location, location, location is no longer that important. So, number one, the, the way people work will change. The future of work will change. Number two, real estate will change. Because if you think that you buy real estate and the only thing that, that will happen to the price is to go up, in the long run, it's no longer true. Because in the virtual world, in the digital world, in the time to come, people can work from a village where they are close to nature and they still can get their job done. So why do they need to work from city area where there's so much traffic jam? And I've been to India. I know the traffic jam is crazy, right? So why do they need to go through all these traffic jams anymore? So that will mean that the future of real estate will also change. So I, I think this is a time where you want to look into not only the future of the way you work, you want to look into the future of your investment portfolio. If you are still holding a lot of real estate, thinking that real estate is the only way to go, 
uh, you want to question yourself, right? Is it true? Right? So um, I saw someone commenting that you cannot download the QR code. So what I'm going to do is this. After this, I'm going to share with Sonali the link. I'm going to share with her the canvas. And then she'll share with you guys so that you guys will be able to download this canvas. And then I want you guys to work with your team members as well. All right? Okay? So, Sonali, I hope I've answered all the questions for every of you in India, but that's not, I'm, I'm not done here. I'd like to share with you one last message before I end. I hope that my goal today to be able to see survival during this crisis has been achieved. And what I'd like to do is this. I will be running another training for you guys. If you guys feel that today's training has been helpful, okay, I want you to thank Franchise India for this, for organizing it for us, for me to be able to meet you from Malaysia, right? So thank you so much, Franchise India. And what we have agreed and what we have promised to do is we will conduct another training on the 23rd of May. Today is to get you guys to innovate, to pivot. But on 23rd of May, I will share more ideas with you guys. I will share more opportunities that you can look into. And I also want to share with you an opportunity that we might be able to work together, right? Which we are working on it right now. So if you guys feel that today's training is good, right? You love it so far, join us on 23rd of May, 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can attend this training from the comfort of your home, right? It's going to be a Zoom training. And the team from Franchise India will send you the link after this. Cool? Now, I have one last message. The most important message of the day is this. Now, during this crisis, I had the privilege and honor to train some of the top entrepreneurs in Malaysia. And I started to ask myself one question. Why is it that some entrepreneurs suffer while some emerge stronger? And then I asked myself, is it because of size? Is it because the bigger companies will survive? Or is it because the smaller companies, they have lesser expenses, they can survive? And I realized, it's really not a matter of size because if you're a smaller company, what's going to happen is this. You have lesser expenses, but you have lesser resources. You have lesser talents. So what you need to do is you need to be able to work everything on your own, right? Or with the very limited resources to be able to survive. And for the big companies, some people will argue that they have more resources, but it's not true. The stress is crazy. At this point of time, if you are, if you're a serial entrepreneur, the stress is crazy. There's so many problems happening on a daily basis. So is it really a matter of size? Not really. In fact, you look at Richard Branson, right? He, he's one of the most respected entrepreneurs around the world. At this point of time, he's stressful as well. He had to sell 500 million worth of Virgin Galactic shares to be able to sustain his business. He's even selling off his island to make sure that the business can survive. So I, I finally found the answer. What helps a business to survive during this crisis and i found the answer here i would think about it when a storm attacks all big trees will get uprooted and at the end of the storm you will notice that only the simple grass will survive why is this happening okay the answer is simple it is because it's not the size of your business that will determine your survival. What truly matters is the size of your ego. The big three means the big ego that you have. If you want to continue to stick on, hold on to that ego, chances are you will be dead. What determines your future is how are you going to keep, keep business simple, keep being simple will make you stable, and Keep staying humble will give you power. Guys, it's such a pleasure to serve every one of you. I hope that this message will resonate with you and this will bring you far during this crisis. I look forward to see you guys in a week time. If you guys want to be a part of this solution, um, connect, contact with Franchise India. If you guys want to know more about me, you can check out my Facebook, you can check out my Instagram. These are my social media contacts right and i look forward to work with franchise india to bring more amazing contents to you guys in india it's been a pleasure to serve thank you so much and i'll pass the stage back to you sonali
Thank you so much, Jonathan, for such a wonderful session and for sharing uh, these informative insights to all of us. Thank you so much for being so patient, e even in all the uh, question and answer session. Um, and a big thank you to all our attendees for uh, uh, being a part of this session. I hope, I really hope we were able to add some value to your lives through this session. And uh, if you need any more information, if you need uh, the innovation canvas and uh, all the further details about our next webinar, please, please get in touch with me and I'll be very happy to provide the same to you. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I hope we see all of you next Saturday at 12 p.m. for another session by Jonathan. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you, Jonathan.